Hi everybody, welcome back. This is part three where we're gonna dive deep into the weeds. I'm gonna show you some CAD. I'm gonna explain the origins of how your edge checker reading might not be perfectly level even though you've aligned your machine. So we talked earlier about the green zone on the side. There's three ways that an aligned machine will get you away from perfectly level and into the green zone and maybe even beyond, depending how bad some of these sources of error are. The first, okay, before we go any further, I wanted to cut in here, I just mentioned error. Error sounds like it's a bad thing. In our case, actually, error is just deviation from a nominal dimension. That's gonna occur whenever we have mechanical parts being made or humans interfacing with mechanical parts and making determinations. So for the rest of this video, I'm gonna say error a bunch of times. It's not bad, we just have to work with it. So now back to the video. The first source of error is what we call parallax or operator viewing inconsistency when you're aligning the machine. The second source of error is tolerance stack up. We'll talk about that in a second. And the third source is blade tapering, basically inaccuracies in the way the blades are manufactured. So these sources of error, these three sources of error are really not avoidable in any skate sharpening situation because you have a piece of equipment, you have a human interpreting an alignment and you have the blades as they're made. So these are things that any machine is gonna encounter there are, however, ways in which we can adjust the machine to resolve them and get back to perfectly square edges. For those of you that are really interested in the details, I'm gonna dive into these three sources of error in a little bit more detail now. When you're aligning your skate sharpener, if you recall, you have the alignment wheel and the alignment tool. This step requires that you look only at the top of the flag of the alignment tool. You don't wanna look at either face. And this image right here, you can see, and this comes right out of our manual, you can see here this leader coming off of the flag at C shows how you can see a little bit of the face of the blade or the flag, sorry, of the alignment tool. We don't wanna see the face. So if we're looking down at the flag of the alignment tool, we don't wanna see either face. We wanna just see that top edge. If you could just see the top edge, you're perfect. It's this variation in how people view that alignment tool that causes a little bit of error that can contribute to this getting off of perfectly level. The second source of error comes from the manufacturing process used to make the components that are in that process of doing the alignment. All of the other error in the machine and the fabrication method of basically everything else inside the product is resolved in the alignment step, but there's the alignment tool itself. And so you can see in this image, I have a couple of pictures of prints that are used to make these components that are part of the alignment process. A component will have a, a tolerance associated with a location of a feature or a face or an edge. And it's that tolerance that's in there to let the machinist who's making that component have a little bit of leeway, because they're never gonna be perfect, that tolerance also contributes to getting outside of perfectly level and into the green zone. The last source of error is blade flatness or blade, blade tapering. When manufacturers of skate blades are making skate blades, they are using sheets of steel and cutting like you would cut cookies out of rolled out dough, they're cutting the blade shapes out of a big sheet of steel. And when they cut that out, the edges of that tool, if it's a physical die that's cutting the blade shapes out, will warp the edges and cause the edges to not be perfectly square. And that will throw off your edge checker. And so we did a big study here at Sparks and you can see in this slide what a flat blade on the left looks like where we've taken a piece of metal and put it across the face of the blade and you can see there's no light visible at the edges and what a tapered blade looks like. The tapered blade has the possibility of throwing off your edge checker. So three sources of error were parallax, that viewing of the alignment tool, tolerance stack up of the components that go into the alignment process itself and blade tapering. 
We have to live with those, but we can adjust our sharpener to get rid of that error. We'll cover that next. Jumping into the CAD, we can see here in this photo what it looks like when the, when the grinding ring on the, on the right here in this, in this smaller image, the grinding ring is lined up with the skate blade. When the grinding ring is lined up with the skate blade, it's going to give you this blade shape where the edges are perfectly level, inside edge, outside edge. That's the grinding wheel centered right underneath the skate blade. When the grinding wheel, again shown in this inset image, is shifted off of the center of the skate blade, that is gonna look like this sketch here where I'm gonna get my left edge higher than my right edge. My left edge higher than my right edge. In here you can see the, this green line denotes the portion of the grinding ring that's gonna be touching the skate steel. That's gonna give me a skate blade that looks like this. You can see this blue segment here represents the skate blade that will come out of a skate sharpening where the grinding wheel is shifted to the right. We've heard people in the field posting on Facebook that a resolution for if your skate blades are not perfectly, your skate edges are not perfectly level, to take the skate out of the sharpener to flip it and put it back in the sharpener and do one or two cycles and then you're going to get even edges. That's absolutely what you do not want to do and I'm going to show you why. If this represents my skate blade from a, from a sharpening where my grinding wheel is not aligned, I can take this skate blade and create a mirror image of it right here. This mirror image is in fact when I take my skate out and flip it around and put it back in the machine. Now I'm gonna put this skate blade into the sharpener and I'm gonna use the grinding wheel to wear away one of those edges. Because again, what I'm trying to do is create even edges. And you can see in this image what even edges would look like. Even edges would look like this red line running across, touching one edge on the left and touching metal from the skate blade on the right. It might not be the edge though. And so I'll show you what that looks like. So if we go over here and we take this skate blade and we put it in the sharpener and then we grind back and forth until we remove enough blue material so that I have a red line which represents my edge checker tilt bar. That red line now is showing even edges but what in fact does that skate blade look like? That skate blade looks like this, this yellow skate blade sketch on the right. I'm certainly going to get an even edge checker reading, but it's not a good looking edge, uh, good looking hollow on that skate blade. It's, it's the edge that I had on the left side and it's now some mashed edge on the right side. So we don't ever want to, if our edges are not even, take the skate out, turn it around, and do a couple of sharpenings because what you're really doing is you're just taking the high edge, grinding it away a little bit until you get an even edge checker reading. What you want to do absolutely is to adjust the machine until you get even edges. We recommend that when you're making this adjustment, try using that rule of thumb that we told you. If you have a half inch hollow, it's gonna take six clicks counterclockwise or clockwise, you want to pull or push the grinding ring to take down the higher edge and you want to make sure you have even coverage over that skate blade. And so we recommend the marker test um, in any of these exercises where you're doing this. What you want to do is you want to put marker in maybe three locations along the length of the skate blade after you've made your adjustment and you want to do a sharpening so that you completely remove that black marker. Once you've completely removed that black marker, you know you've made contact between the grinding ring and the full surface of that skating edge of the skate blade. And what you should see is you should see a, a, an even edge on that because now you've moved the grinding wheel under the center of the skate blade. And if you take the skate out and reverse it and put it back in, you should again see even edges. If you recall, there was the rule of thumb of six clicks. So if my high edge is towards me, I wanna pull the grinding wheel six clicks 
to remove that high edge. That six clicks is related to the size of the grinding ring. That's for a half inch grinding ring. This difference between the radius of hollow and how many clicks gets into the geometry and it gets pretty complicated and very confusing. But just remember, half inch, six clicks, you wanna move the grinding ring towards the higher edge. If your grinding wheel gets bigger, add a little bit. If your grinding wheel gets smaller, take a little bit away. So that was a lot to cover so far, but I missed yet a fourth source of error. We skipped it because in the case of the Sparks Edge Checker, our reference lines are machined in the same operation as the reference feature, which is this plane inside the edge checker, which touches the skate blade. There are other edge checkers on the market where there are mechanical fastening means in between your reference lines and the reference surface. In the case of this edge checker, there's a magnet with a hole drilled through it, and those two pieces are fastened together. There are, there's error in that assembly. In the case of this edge checker, there's a sticker which actually has the measurement lines, and that's adhered to this backing plate, and there are a number of parts adhered together in this assembly, which could be another source of error. So again, it's not a very large source of error, but it is a source of error that it was the fourth source that we didn't mention in the video so far. So that was a lot we covered today. I realize I may have confused a few of you, but hopefully we enlightened a large majority of you to the sources of error, how it shows up on your edge checker, and ways that you can adjust your machine to take care of it. We love getting these questions and answering them here on the edge. Please keep the questions coming to help at sparkshockey.com, and we'll see you on the next episode of The Edge.